nobody will be moving with cars that we are moving with them now because children will walk onto us and kill us that we are the cause of all the happening in this country if we refuse to adjust and face the situation squarely if we wish could be horses the nation can be declared state of emergency so that this thing can be faced squarely it's really unfortunate imagine if when this thing was happening in the northeast we were saying that this place is very close to some of the boundaries talk of zamfara talk of niger now kaduna the center of the happenings talk of two as well what do you want us to do In Abuja here, Boko Haram are all over the, 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 the federal character. Federal capital. I'm assuring you. Go ahead. Go ahead. If care is not taken, we are all going to be consumed in this place. Sitting here pretending to say they were, that we are the people of the country until when we try, one of us is killed before we know precisely what is the problem on ground our relations our people cannot sleep every day killing here killing there killing over there kidnapping raping what do we do and the funny thing about us nigerians we will sit there and make a lot of noise. At the end of the day, nothing can be done. Very good in executing. There we can talk and order. And nothing will be done by Nigerians. Why must it be so? And when we are trying to take decisions, we expose all our plans. For the body to know what we are planning to do. For God's sake, why should Nigeria be in that form? They come to borrow us to go and fight outside foreign countries. But in our country, we cannot do anything. Should we continue this way? The Senate President, you are number three in this country. If other people cannot function, go and take over our force, we we'll support you. If you call for impeachment now, they will be looking for you. Who is that person that called for the impeachment? Whether it is good or not, they wouldn't know what you are saying. Not knowing that you are saying the mind of your people. So time has come. If you don't move forward, we shall not follow. If you move forward, we shall follow and do the right thing as point you. We beg of you, take decision and advise us accordingly. I will not open my mouth to say, we are saying we are going to impeach. But you know the rest. Thank you. Bye-bye. Let me at this point uh, say that uh, the Senate President is not the Senate. The Senate is the Senate. The Senate President is the creation of Senators. And I've taken note of everything said. And of course, I will lead from the front by the grace of God. Senator Seriaki Dixon. Thank you, Mr. President of the Senate and my distinguished colleagues. I am Henry Seraki Dixon, representing Bayelsa West. Mr. President, this morning I came to your office to bother you a little bit before we both came here, all of us came here for sitting, for two reasons. The most important one, which I whispered to you and principal officers, was the need for us to have a robust discussion of the security situation this nation is facing. And I wanted to suggest not only this, I didn't know my dear colleague was going to raise this motion at that time, but I also wanted to request you and the leadership for us to have a robust executive session to harmonize the various positions and resolutions and agreements that this Senate are taken even before some of us joined.
we were following what was going on. And we are here, and my dear colleague has raised this motion that has elicited this very bipartisan and absolutely nationalistic response that is very impressive. And this is a good beginning for a new Nigeria. Mr. President, as you know, I whispered to you also that I was going to draw attention based on Order 42 to raise concerns about the developments in Chad a few days ago, about a week ago. Because that development also has a direct and immediate consequence for both our national security and also for regional stability, security, and for the sustenance of democracy. Little did I know that my colleague was going to raise these fundamental issues. I want to, Mr. President, commend you, the leadership, and all colleagues that have listened to across party lines. I can see that we are not making the mistake that was made before 2015 general elections, where everything about security was dumped on the ruling party and the government at the time. I'm impressed that we are looking at issues dispassionately, as we ought to. And this should be a signpost of what is possible in Nigeria. Because right now, as you know, there is also loss of faith. We are not only losing lives in this country. There is loss of faith in the Nigerian project, in the Nigerian dream, in the Nigerian vision. And now if you ask yourself, is this the nation of Macaulay? Is this the nation of Azikiwe? Is this the nation of Balewa? and Amadou Bello, the Saddam. Is this the nation of Awolowo and of Harold Ebabriye, my leader, who led our people during the pre-independence conferences and so on? There is a general loss of it. And my dear colleagues, this is why some of us, including me, have taken the position that all these security issues we are raising all these issues that have bedeviled us, we shouldn't just blame one party or one government. Fundamentally, it is also a product of the faulty constitutional structures of this country. Faulty constitutional structures. We have forgotten, we have forgotten that this is a nation of proud African kingdoms. Proud kingdoms with an ancient proud civilization. Look at Karen Kanemboronu thousands of years ago. Look at uh, Benin thousands of years ago. We have forgotten. The founding fathers of our nation knew this. They knew this. They went for a constitutional arrangement that suited our peculiarities. And we should not forget the wise counsel of Amadou Bello, Sir Amadou Bello, may God bless his soul. When he told his contemporaries, he said, gentlemen, we are building a new Nigeria. Let us not forget our differences. Let us forget, not forget our differences. Let's remember our history and our circumstances. Yet, craft a nation. Bearing that in mind. But the military gentlemen came most of our leaders who knew our people, they lost their lives. The systems that were put in place were discarded. And today, you have a government system that is federal only in name. My dear colleague, Senator Bashir, has been laboring himself here, day after day, at least twice or thrice since I came to make the point that our country is a federation. So, among the various decisions that we will take will be a return, my dear colleagues, to the essential founding principles of our country. 
Now you have a situation where governors are only governors in name as far as security is concerned. I watched my younger brother, the governor of uh, Niger State, when he was lamenting. He has no control over security. It is not that the federal system, the security system, is deliberately refusing. I don't think we should draw that conclusion. But what has become apparent is that they are structurally incompetent, incapable. How can one man sit down in an office in Abuja and police our diverse nation, a nation of over 200 million people, and still counting? So, Mr. President, we are about to lose the Nigerian dream, and we should not let that happen. Some of us, and we have told everybody, including those who are pushing for, for going different ways, that that is not the solution. The challenge is a challenge of leadership. Everyone must rise to the occasion. Mr. President, who is leader of the nation, should rise and take leadership. Take leadership and do what it has to do, including leading in the area of fundamental constitutional reforms. Where he fails, this chamber, working in conjunction with our counterparts in the House of Reps, we can give this nation a new direction. Let me add that I'm very impressed by the quality of minds that are in this chamber, and I'm privileged, sir, to also serve on your other committee on constitutional amendment. And in the meetings I've attended so far, I'm pleased with the quality of members there, patriotic Nigerians from across the length and breadth of this great nation. And I believe that, guided by these fundamental ideas of unity, based on equality, equality of citizenship, justice and fairness to one and to all, a nation that belongs to all, not a few, not to anyone, but a nation that we can build, that will stand up to the dreams and aspirations of the Founding Fathers, as the largest African nation that can stand up and portray what is best for the black man. That dream is now under threat. And so I want to end, Mr. President, by thanking all of us and, and for, to say we should continue in this way, but also that beyond this, let us move to a solution. Solution being sitting down robustly with an open mind. With an open mind. You may, you may round up, please. not north and south, but as Nigerians, as Africans, who have now a duty to build on the foundations that our founding fathers laid for us. Thank you very much. Senator Said Al Ghali. Thank you, Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues. My name is Senator Said Al Ghali, and I represent Gombe North. Mr. President, let me say this. The issue of security is a constitutional responsibility. We were all sworn in by Quran or Bible to uphold and defend the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Secondly, Mr. President, the issue of insecurity is always attributed sometimes. We say lack of arms. Some would say lack of ammunition. Some would say inadequate personnel. Mr. President, be that as it may, if it is arms and ammunition, the power to appropriate is vested on this National Assembly. Not only that, the power to oversight. If you appropriate, you have to do effective oversight. If there is problem in the budget, let us call the budget. Let us have a critical look at it. If there are need for us to buy money to fund the security agencies, we must do that. But what are our standing committees doing on the issue of oversight? 
Mr. President, this issue of insecurity, look at what happened recently in Gaidab. There are insinuations that ground troops were fired by their air support during this era of technology. Mr. President, at a time, our fighter jet was shot by these bandits. We have drones, yet we cannot purchase them, they cannot be procured and put into use. The Constitution also went further to say, not only security, but welfare. What we have now in Nigeria is unemployment, poverty, out of school children, poor infrastructure, poor health care delivery. All these are issues. Again, Mr. President, some of us are saying Abuja is not safe. We don't want Abuja to be safe. We want Nigeria to be safe. And if there is one problem in one part of the body, the whole body is affected and there is bound to be reaction. Finally, Mr. President, I don't want us to start apportioning blame. We are all leaders of this country. If the president is the commander-in-chief, but National Assembly is an institution, the wisdom behind separation of powers is to have checks and balances. Let us now ask ourselves whether we have checks and balances in this country or not. All these are issues. Therefore, all hands must be on deck to address this issue. Our committees should do their effective oversight. Let them give us feedback in terms of personnel, in terms of funding, in terms of equipment, in terms of releases. Mr. President, look at the huge amount of money that is spent on so many sectors of this country, abandoning the security, which is the most critical. Look at the money that is spent on COVID-19, feeding school grown children, even when the country was on lockdown. Mr. President, all these are issues. But truth is truth, and truth is plain. Finally, Mr. President, on this note, let me pray that there should be peace and security in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Distinguished colleagues, uh, you will agree with me that we have devoted sufficient time for various interventions by our colleagues. Now we'll go to the prayers. The Senate resolves to one call on the Chief of Defense Staff, the Chief of Army Staff, and the Inspector General of Police to immediately deploy troops to defend unarmed populace and bring back security to the affected communities, which is the only antidote to restoring confidence in the security and safety of the affected communities. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against say nay, aye. Prayer to urge the Chief of Army Staff and the Inspector General of Police to, as a matter of urgency, direct for the establishment of a permanent military and police command basis at the axis adjoining Shororo and Rafi local government areas, respectively, and to redesign the modus operandi of the military operations within the affected areas so as to curtail the escalating insecurity. Those in favor of prayer to say aye. Those against say nay, aye. Prayer 3, direct the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and NEMA to, as a matter of national emergency, provide relief materials and medical support team to the victims immediately. Those in favor of Prayer 3 say aye. Those against say nay, aye. Prayer 4, call on the Senate to observe a minute silence for all the victims of this callous acts of criminality. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against say nay, aye. Before the prayer, Additional prayer. Senator Opeemi, Bamidele. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Michael Opeemi, Bamidele, representing the Kitty Central Senatorial District. Mr. President, my additional prayer, since I couldn't make a contribution, which is what I would have said, is simply that the Senate would mandate the leadership of this Senate to book an appointment with the Commander-in-Chief on behalf of the 109 Senators. Because I'm not convinced Mr. President is even aware of everything that is happening, we need to be able to tell our constituents 
that we met with the commander in chief. And these are the things. And if we are meeting with the commander in chief, all the service chiefs and all the relevant people will be there. So simply, sir, I am I'm suggesting that we add that as an additional prayer. Thank you, Mr. President. Any second? Senator Adiola. Thank you, Mr. President. Adiola Solomon Olamileko, representing Lagos West. I rise to second the motion as moved by Senator Pemi Bamdili. I so second. Mr. Police, those in favor of the additional prayer say aye. Those against any that I say. Additional prayer. Senator Otazi. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Senator Chukuka Otazi. And I represent the good people of Enugu North and the of Enugu State. My additional prayer is that the, the Senate mandates the leadership to invite the, the, the Chief of Army Staff and the other command leaders to have a close session with the Senate and, and, uh, so that we can feel their pause and then they will get their feedback from them. It's not overtaking, no. No, 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 no. Um, any seconder, please? Seconder. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Of the Omar Gate Data Center Central District. Uh, in, in lieu of uh, my own additional prayers, I will waive that. Uh, and I will second uh, uh, the additional prayer moved by Senator Tarzi to invite the security, the service chiefs, to brief the Senate on steps taken so far to address the, the rising uh, case of insurgency. I think... Uh, please wear your mask, please. Distinguish. But before, before I put that to vote, I just want to make an observation here, which maybe I could... These service chiefs have just been appointed. They are still trying to put together the... The, the mechanisms. So, so, just hold on, please. So, when we invite them, when we invite them, what exactly do we want from them? What I will want, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, you see, when they were screened, they were screened by a committee. Uh, ordinarily, I would have preferred if they came before the entire Senate. I would have been able to ask them, now you're going to be appointed to so, so, so position. How exactly are you going to do this any different, you know, from the way your predecessors handled the matter? And now that they've been there for a couple of, uh, about a month now, uh, with this rising insurgencies everywhere, they need to tell us now, in light of what is happening, this is what we are planning to do. To con they, they need to reassure us. I would rather have them reassure us than have a meeting with Mr. President. Because Mr. President, once he appoints his people, he gives them a free hand. They are professionals. They are the ones who should be briefing us, not Mr. President. Because Mr. President is a policy position. I think they are professionals they should be briefing us. I think they should come before us. Okay. Those in favor of the additional prayer say aye. aye. Those against any. Aye. The ayes have it. Additional prayer. Senator Sirai Thank you, Mr. President and dear colleagues. Mr. President, in the light of the the issue about the developments, unfortunate developments in Chad that I raised. I was going to add, so that we can kill as many birds with one stone, that uh, we mandate the Senate Committees on Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security um, to have audience with the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, the National Security Advisor, and the Minister of Defense uh, on the regional implications on the regional implications of the developments in Shah. I so move. Any seconder? Seconder, Senator Mohamed Adam Bulkachua, Mr. President, my name is Senator Adam Mohamed Bulkachua, representing Bauch. But, Chairman, before, before that, can we amend this slightly to include the DGNIA? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, my name is Senator Adam Mohamed Bukachua, representing Bauchi North in Bauchi State, Senatorial District. Now, I rise to support, but to include the Director General NIA 
in the list of people to be uh, discussed with. So I, I move to second. Before I put the question, Senator Sarakhi Dixon, are you okay with uh, his slight amendment, including the DGNI? Okay, okay. Those in favor of the additional prayer, say aye. Those against any the eyes. Additional prayer, Senator Abraham Gobir. Thank you very much, uh, Excellency, distinguished witness. My additional prayer is that I urge the President to order for the massive recruitment of police and the military personnel in order to combat this insecurity in the country. Any second, Senator Abraham Gobir? I am Senator Abaroji I stand to second the uh, motion moved by Senator Gouvier. So second. Those in favor of the additional prayer say aye. Those against any die say aye. Additional prayer? Any additional prayer? Senator Asrajuddin. Mr. President, the additional prayer is to set up uh, an ad hoc committee to brief, to consider and brief the Senate on the status of the security ad hoc report already adopted by the state, uh, by the Senate as to implementation so far, and submit a roadmap for further implementation. Any second, Senator Issa Jibrin. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I am Issa Jibrin, representing the very good people of Kogi East. I rise to second the additional prayer as moved by my colleague. Those in favor of the additional prayer say aye. Those against say nay. Aye, aye, aye. Additional prayer, Senator Baroji Brin. Senator Baroji Brin, Colonel Norris. That there should be procurement of uh, the necessary equipment for the use of our military and the police. Any seconder? Senator Geshambasi. Thank you, Mr. President. Gershon Basi, Cross River South. I rise to second the motion moved by the additional prayer moved by Senator Jibrin. Those in favor of the additional prayer say aye. Those against any, the aye say aye. Thank you very much, uh, the distinguished colleagues. Uh, before the one minute silence, let me also remark that. Sorry? No, please. Uh, that's okay. We have already passed that stage. That's a different uh, this thing. We will arrange it, please. Um, distinguish. Distinguish. If you are asking for the service chiefs, we will arrange it. Because if you say one week and some of them are at the war theater, we, what will you do? We will get them here. But I think we should be liberal. If it is possible to get them within one week, we can. But if we make it mandatory, then there will be a problem if, if they are attending to real threats. Yes. So we will arrange for that. But let me also say that the serious security situation um, is a matter of concern to not only the parliament, but all citizens. And um, what we have done in today's plenary is to be able to speak the minds of our people how our people uh, are faring in the security situation uh, we are today. But what is crucial is uh, to proffer uh, solutions. And our solutions are, of course, the resolutions we pass. And then we, we make some follow-ups. I don't think it's, uh, it's the base of ideas that we close the Senate because there is a serious security situation. Actually, when your country is challenged, that is when you need the parliament to be alive, not to close. And we should never be deterred. We should never be discouraged with discussions that we hold here, because this is the essence of parliament. But we follow it up. We insist that our resolutions are implemented. Today, there is no level of arm of government that is not concerned about the security situation. Everybody is concerned. What is crucial is for us to buy the bullet. We must appropriate funds. Even though that's not the only way out, that's not the only solution. But the military, particularly our security agencies in general, require additional manpower, so much manpower. 
And I believe that they cannot just recruit people without funds being appropriated for them to do that. So we need to have supplementary budget to fund not only the recruitment of additional personnel, but also procurement of weapons and platforms. It's going to be expensive, but that's an investment that is worth, worthwhile. There is no better investment today in our country, or indeed anywhere, than to protect the lives and property of citizens. That is our legitimacy, and we are all challenged. What is required is for us to be persistent, to be patient, to push, engage with the executive arm of government, and to be able to get an outcome that everybody needs. But it is also an opportunity for us to appeal to our citizens that this is a phase in our life. We are already in it. But by the grace of God and every possible effort that the government will make will be out of it. And what that means is as government plays its role, citizens are also supposed to play their role. There is no intelligence without the contribution of citizens. Because the intelligence is supposed to come from the citizens. When 300 or 100 motorcycles will carry 300 bandits into a community, they pass through other communities, but nobody says anything. That doesn't help the security agencies. Let me, on behalf of the entire Senate here, and indeed the National Assembly, also commend our security forces. These people work with less than what they should have. Some of them are killed, they pay the ultimate sacrifice. Actually, I believe that we should also, in our one-minute silence, observe together for those military people that were killed. In my state, about um, uh, last week, Boko Haram struck. In Minoc, we lost uh, some of our people in the armed forces. They were killed whether by the mistake of the Air Force or some means. And it's all over the country. You go to the Southeast, so many policemen were killed, military, and so on and so forth. So we need to also continuously and always commend and identify with our security forces because they do this work with very limited resources. And it is our duty to ensure that we give them the kind of resources that they require and hold them accountable. At the moment, we'll continue to push that they do their best with the little that they have. But we must provide for them, and the supplementary budget is essential. I will urge that the executive arm of government requests for a supplementary budget to give our armed forces more resources that we can afford. But definitely we have to do something. It can't be that they should continue to operate without additional resources that will also include manpower. We need to mobilize our youth. We have millions of them who have no jobs, millions of them who are willing who are patriotic, it, they want to fight for their country. Why can't we engage them? Not only as a source of employment, but as a means of fighting this, this war. We are gradually sliding into a very difficult situation, and we have to take this country back from all the insecurity uh, tendencies that we have across the country. With this, uh, I want to thank all my colleagues. We should never despair that our resolutions have not the been implemented. We should continue to insist that the resolutions are implemented. And that doesn't mean that we will not continue to talk when it is necessary for us to talk because this is the parliament. Thank you. One minute silence.
May the souls of our departed colleagues killed in Niger State and indeed across the country, and our departed compatriots who were killed in operations and all over the country, our armed forces and other security agencies rest in perfect peace. Amen. Amen. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, my highly respected and distinguished colleagues, uh, having come to after one o'clock at this point and after the exhaustive debate that we have on the one of the most fundamental issues that are affecting our nation and our people, uh, a lot of contributions have been made, which I think uh, uh, a lot of us should go back home and reflect on what has been discussed. Uh, I rise to move a motion for this distinguished chamber to suspend all other items on our agenda to another legislative day. I so move. Minority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Engineer Barry Bay, representing Abia South. I rise to second the motion ably moved by the Majority Leader. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor of the motion that the Senate do adjourn till tomorrow, Wednesday, the 28th day of April 2021 at 10 a.m. from say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have The Senate is here by adjourned till tomorrow, Wednesday, the 28th day of April 2021 at 10 a.m. prompt. <laughs> Allah, la, 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 la.